Hey, welcome everybody. This is Mark Smith. I'm the host of Digital Roughnecks, and I'm here with Vicky Knott, who's the CEO and co-founder of Crux OCM. And they're in the category of robotic industrial process automation. So Vicky, welcome to Digital Roughnecks. Great. Thanks for having me, Mark. So tell me about how you got started, right? So you are a, a technology company. You use, um, you know, the latest in science and engineering and even AI to do what you do. But how, what was the big idea that got you to start a company? Yeah. So um, having a chemical engineering background and working in you know, multiple heavy industries. I spent some time training as a control room operator for a 2000 mile major uh, oil pipeline in North America. So most people will probably figure out which one that is. <laughs> and so after having trained there, um, you know, as an example, uh, starting up an asset like that, you're issuing commands for pressure set point changes, um, turning pumps on, uh, swinging valves, so as an example, it would take about a thousand commands to, to start up that line. And that line would shut down about twice a week. Um, <laughs> and then um, and then the time it takes usually takes about three hours to start up a line like that. So you know, if you have a smaller line, it'd be less time. But really, it was like having sat and lived through that and having trained on it um, definitely broke a sweat each time I had to do it. And folks would say with almost like a badge of pride of there is no on button. But like, you know, our phones have on buttons. So why isn't there an on button? <laughs> So it was the the idea that, okay, here I am, I'm an operator on this pipeline, it takes a thousand steps or commands to get this thing started. There's got to be a better way. So you and your uh, co-founder started a company and I heard you even went to, uh, you know, Oslo to go, yeah. you know, kind of kickstart that thing. Yeah. Well, kickstarting it after two and a half years of uh, grinding and not getting anywhere. It's kind of tough for a couple of <laughs> a couple of technical engineers from oil and gas to know how to start a business. So yeah, so we went uh, we went to Norway for three months. It was uh, with the TechStars program. It was awesome. And what happened there? Oh, we learned how to build a business. I learned what the word startup really meant. I learned what uh, venture capital meant. Um, and uh, we came out of it understanding how to sell to large enterprise, which was something we certainly didn't know how to do. Um, learned what a, a sales pipeline is, what marketing actually means, and uh, and met some fantastic angel investors who wanted to invest uh, right away. So okay, so now you you built your product uh, enough of it to go land a customer who sounded to me like had a similar problem to what you had um, doing the thousand commands. Yeah, so this this customer exact same problem. So that's how we you know kind of start feeling good that we might have this magical thing called product market fit. Um, and they had you know they've got uh, in the upwards of fifty plus pipeline systems. Um, you know, control room operators managing multiple of them. These control room operators are, are overworked. <laughs> There's a lot going on. So um, fatigue in control rooms is something that's a leading cause of accidents, as reported by FINSA. Um, so, so they're really looking for a way to start um, automating more and, and increasing the efficiency of their assets. So we've been working with them for about a year now, um, getting close to live deployments. And, and uh, you know, there's a, a hundred million plus anticipated revenue increase um, from working with uh, technology like ours. And how many steps does it take with your system? We can do it in one. But if your control room operators are not comfortable, we can do it in maybe 10. Um, so it depends on what, what folks want. And you know, the goal here is adoption of the technology. Um, it's not gonna provide anyone any value if they don't wanna use it. So if there's a little more that's required um, to make control room operators happy to use it, we're, we can definitely configure that. Um, we sit on-prem. So we do sit inside of the customer's firewalls. Um, you know, we can look at other ways of doing things uh, post, uh, post the colonial incident if, if that was required. Um, and what we do is we connect via OPC connections. So we're actually reading real-time data um, from the existing SCADA system, computing what the commands are and, and executing them back to the SCADA system on behalf of the control room operator. So that's how we drastically lower how many commands a control room operator needs to take. Hmm. And the reason why they can generate $100 million extra revenue is because why? Because we can maintain them at uh, max throughput at a higher frequency. So starting them up faster, 
maintaining max rate during their batch transitions, making sure that every control room operator is maintaining back max rate. So it's, it's squeezing that extra utilization out of an existing system. So a lot of folks don't know, but like pipelines are only at 85 to maybe 95% utilization, yet people will still say, oh, but we're at 100%. We need 100% of our contracts. It's like, well, great, good for you, but you could increase your contracts if you use more of your capacity on your pipeline. So to go from a thousand steps to 10 or to one, what, what does that translate to in, uh, in terms of time? Yeah, so we've been showing about a 40% decrease in time. Um, that's for really large assets. Obviously, the smaller your asset is, um, the less time it takes to get it up and running. Therefore, the less <laughs> benefit there is to get. Um, but yeah, like on these big systems, we're showing about 40%. So if you do the math on that, so say you have a I think it's 4,500 meter cubed per hour pipeline, apologize my Canadian, um, and you're going to, and you can get at twice a week, you can start at 40% faster every time on this really major pipeline. That equates to about 4% additional volume. 4% on a pipeline that big, I can, we need, we can go through the math another time specifically, but at three bucks a barrel, you're looking at about 26 million a year in additional revenue on tolls. So because of the colonial pipeline thing, that's you know pretty currently in the news and cybersecurity and stuff, are people like, what are they asking about your system? that you, you know, are they asking about cybersecurity and how that all works and, and, and could you have helped a situation like that they're in? So the, like the thing that customers have loved about us is that we sit on prem inside of their firewalls. Now after colonial, maybe that's not what they're going to love as much. Um, like I think the, you know, the single sign on thing, if, if, uh, if an application like us is forced into the single sign-on as well, and then that was the vulnerability, if that was what it was, um, then we'd be forced inside of the, the exact same situation as the existing SCADA system. So a way that we could help is by having letting us have a, a, separate, um, a separate login and a separate set of credentials. And then that way, there's always another way to operate your pipeline. Right, in case they get a crypto lock and, and yeah. can't operate it. Because you know we heard that they were able to operate it manually <clears throat> but as I don't know how many people are left that can actually, you know, operate the PLC directly, you know, without an inter interface of SCADA or whatever. Um, what other scenarios can you do, um, you know, that, that you've been able to help customers with? Yeah, so we've got a, a customer up north of the border and um, we've been working with them on gathering systems. So they have a system of over 10 gathering systems um, that we've been working through fully automating. The goals of automating that is instead of a control room operator turning on and off each of your lacks or where you know your volumes are coming in from your wells into the gathering system. So we're operating them all autonomously to, ma to maximize and, and maintain a max rate at the bottom of the gathering system. What that does is it increases your overall throughput, assuming that the nominations are available. It also decreases your pressure and flow variabilities, increasing the rateability of your system and um, increasing your asset integrity. So, you know, less, uh, less pressure swings. So if somebody was interested in this and, and, you know, taking the next step toward autonomous operations, what, how should they get a hold of you or what should they do? Ah. Well, my email is Vicky, V-I-C-K-I at CREXOCM, C-R-U-X-O-C-M dot com. There's also our website where you can fill out a form. Good old LinkedIn. I'm all over that. So feel free to send me a, a direct message on there as well. Yeah. And we're definitely going to post this uh, episode on LinkedIn and you can share it and there'll be all kinds of links um, to, uh, to follow up and also links in our show notes. So um, anything else? What do you see as kind of the the next big thing that uh, you're focused on and where you see having a big impact on the market? Yeah, so so right now we are in, in the pipeline space, super keen to get into the gas pipeline space. Then um, we've had multiple conversations in gas plants as well as LNG plants. So any of these big assets, um, you know, hydropower that have a central control room where you still have folks using paper procedures, checklists and rules of thumb, that's certainly somewhere that we want to help provide value. Okay, great. Well, Vicki, I want to thank you uh, for being here. And, you know, Digital Roughnecks is all about that next digital transformation that's happening right now. And you're obviously proof of that, making a big impact there. So I appreciate you being on Digital Roughnecks. Great. Thanks for having me.